Well, on a cold day, once again, it's a warm welcome to Festival Focus. I'm Tom Lee, and as ever, my co-pilot is David Mullins. And as is our way, on a weekly basis, we run the rule over the headline performances that have been catching our eye uh, with a view to the build-up to the big spring festivals, be it Cheltenham, be it Aintree, be it Punchestown, and so on. Uh, David, we're going to kick off last Friday, Huntingdon, Katira, unbeaten two from two over hurdles now developing nicely she added to her november win at utoxeter by doing it really quite nicely at huntingdon going well clear she won by 13 lengths on friday the 13th doing it quite cosily she's got a quote of 20 to 1 or thereabouts for the mayor's novices hurdle at cheltenham in a few weeks time was there enough promise in winning on a very different circuit like huntingdon to suggest that that's anything to pay attention to at 20 to 1, she's as good as I've seen for the Mayor's Novice. I think it's probably the value bet of the week now um, at this stage. Um, as far as what I've seen out of Skeltons, I think she's probably the best chance of a winner during the week. It's very hard to come up against Willie in, the, in these Mayor's Novices hurdles. He had a winner yesterday in um, in Clon Mel um, by 22 lengths. But I, I just really liked, mm. I really like Katira. She done everything perfect. She jumped great. And she quickened up after the last, went to the line really well. I think a 20 to 1, the skeletons are going to have her spot on again. Um, that's the value of the, bit, the, the anti-post for me. And there was me thinking you'd be shaking your head. That's fascinating. Um, stick with Huntingdon on Friday. Gary Moore might have another good one, Perseus Way. Uh, this is also on the flat, was with Charlie Appleby. He was with Owen Burroughs for a spell as well. But now for the Moors, he's making his mark over hurdles. Um, you think that this stable, they are no strangers to a really, really class horse. They prepared masterfully Saida Gruji to win the champion chase. They've got another good one with the, the Enigma, which is Goshen. But this Perseus Way uh, placed at Cheltenham on his hurdling debut back in November. And you'd say he's getting the hang of it now, at least, because he showed good speed, good jumping technique to win a good race, the Chatteris Fen at Huntingdon. That display got him quotes of 14 or 16 to 1 for the what's now the Boodles Juvenile, but the Fred Winter effectively, or 33 to 1 even for the Triumph Hurdle, which they should have won three years ago, that stable. Do either of those prices merit closer inspection in your eyes? Well, as you say, he could have another good one. I don't think he's a good horse. He has Cheltenham form. He ran too keen on Cheltenham the first day, finished second, I thought, which was a good run. Mm -hmm. But they've gone for cheek pieces the last day and it worked. He won. He he jumped okay. I think he's a candidate for this sort of a race. I don't think he's going to be a good horse and I don't know how much he's going to have up his sleeve. But I think he's really going to suit the race. Um, you know, he can travel with that flat speed as he was too keen the first day in Cheltenham. Um, the cheek pieces must mean he stays and he keeps a bit for himself. That's the sort of race or the sort of horse you want to be winning um for a two mile juvenile hurdle in Cheltenham it takes a bit of getting up that hill for those juveniles I, I like the horse I think he's um he fits the bill for the race at those prices though I'd be trying to look for something that could be a good horse the likes of the Gaelic Warriors of Brazil's um you know sometimes it can be as hot as the Triumph Hurdle I'd like to see something a little bit more um something a little bit more um you want a bit more pizzazz, to you know, just to, <laughs> just to uh, light the fire. Yeah, okay. Well, move on 24 hours. Kempton Park last Saturday, um, a horse who's already a multiple winner over fences is Pick Dohey for Paul Nichols, who's on his jollies out in Antigua. But he'll have enjoyed watching this on his mobile phone because Pick Dohey, uh, what I will say, flat speed tracks seem to be what this lad is all about. His record over fences is now six from 13 after he won the Silviniaco Conti chase, the grade two, and Harry Cobden, winner number 76 of a really good campaign for him. I thought it was interesting. Connections are happy, understandably. They highlighted the Ascot chase next month and then probably Aintree as a strong possibility in April. What I'd like to ask you is this, David, can a leopard, can a leopard change its spots or are the bookies completely barking up the wrong tree and trying to bowl us a googly by putting him in at 16 to 1 for the Ryanair. He's run once in Cheltenham. That was four years ago in the Triumph when he was out with the Washing 10th of 14. He's obviously a better horse four years further down the tracks and over fences. 
but is he the flat speed master or could he be a player at Cheltenham? He looks a flat track horse. Paul Nichols' horses, when they get out in front on flat tracks, they jump really well. This lad bolted up off a rating of 157. If an Irish horse done that in a handicap, and it wasn't it wasn't a five-runner handicap, I don't think. I remember watching the race, but I forget how many runners ran it. He bolted up off 157. If a horse done that in the Tiestes in Ireland, he'd get £14 for it. This guy only got five. I is this the, the English handicapper coming to his senses about about ratings? I don't know. But two years ago, I can picture this horse getting <clears throat> getting ten pound for that win. Um, you'd give him his chance, but would you back him? No, I wouldn't anyway. No, all right. Well, look, let's now move into your even more specialist area, which is action across the the pond in Ireland, Punchestown Sunday. A steadily run tactical grade two Moscow flying novice hurdle uh, went the way of Ampere Pass, uh, who drew praise from the winning rider Paul Townend, uh, who said the following. These are Townend's quotes post race. Uh, as I said, uh, after he won at Nace, he doesn't show us that at home. Good turn of foot day. I was very happy with him. He jumped like a buck, and the only hurdle he was slow at was the last. He goes on to say, and this is the key bit, it's hard to know how good he is because he shows so little at home, yet he does it on the track. And this is it. This is the bit that really caught my imagination. Townend speaking now. I think he's very smart, and he gave me a great feel today. David, were you similarly impressed? Because afterwards, David Casey coming out saying, we'd be happy enough, he's going to get all the entries. Um, were you impressed and what would be your favourite route? Because the bookies clearly just don't know. They have him pegged between five and seven for the Supreme, six to one for the Ballymore. Nice problem to have. Yeah, he looks very good. Nace was um, Nace was one of those performances that just kind of blow your mind open with not having heard of a horse and then um, for him to go out and do that. But obviously he shows very little at home. That to me is an indication that you would step up and trip especially when you have the likes of Facile Vega. Um, yes. That's where I can see him. I can see him going for the ballet more. Um, I, I like the horse, but those prices, they're short enough for a horse with two runs. Nice and punches town, but ticks in the right boxes. Um, sticking with punches town on Sunday, uh, we've got a mare to talk about, recently purchased by JP McManus, uh, Impervious, who won the grade three novice on the same day. She's a perfect three from three over fences. And what I like about this is that she showed the boys how it was done, uh, beating readily Journey With Me, M Minella Kakuna, or Kruner, I should say, Minella Kruner, and also Hard Door. Those three had no answer to Impervious, uh, who, with plenty of weight on her back, got the job done. Sixth in the Mayor's Novice at last year's Cheltenham Festival. She was only beaten seven lengths on that occasion. Does she strike you for the Mayor's Chase now as a big player? Bookies go no bigger than nine to four. And in some lists, she's even challenging Allegory Devassi for favouritism, impervious. Yeah, you'd have to be really taken with her. Um, she gave the boys weight. I thought that was a good race. Journey with, we, Journey with me is no slouch. Either mm. is Hador. Um, Manella Croner probably loved the ground and stayed at it really well. For me, I think she's um she's the one for the mare's chase, definitely. Allegory de Vassi, she obviously has a lot of ability, there's no doubt about that, and probably more than impervious. But you're going to an open mare's chase in Cheltenham, you're going to want the experience. I think this one has her three runs over fences now. I think Colin Murphy has done a great job with her, and I, I think that's going to leave her spot on for for all the for all the experience she's going to need. Well, it's Ladies' Day here on Festival Focus this week, folks, because the, the best mentions so far have been for Katira and Impervious. Um, just a note about Colin Murphy, David, because he, without the ammunition, I don't know, was he disillusioned? Was he just not getting the quality, the patronage, whatever? Went away from training for a little while, has come back with a real spring in his step. Give him the, give him the right horse. This fella can do it, can't he? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I kind of grew up, when I started watching racing properly, I grew up looking at Big Zeb, Brave Inca, mm. Peter De La Rock, all those great horses that he yeah. had. And by God, he turned them out at every grade one meeting and they won the races. Vala Levadette, he was good with mares too. You know, there was um, Colin Murphy. He's, uh, he's no slouch. And um, 
you know, he, as we can see, we've seen it before. You don't lose those things overnight. Uh, and one horse who doesn't seem to have lost his touch either ran at Clonmel on Tuesday. A certain Gaelic warrior, arguably the gamble unsuccessfully. So at the Cheltenham Festival 2022, uh, when he was reeled in by Brazil, uh, a winner at Tremor in a stroll last month. Uh, once again, we know he's alive and well because, again, at prohibitive odds, one to 14. This time he was 15 lengths too good for Blue Sari and Co. Um, off the back of that, he's six to one, but the general price is five to one for the Ballymore. Does that seem the most likely route to you when you've got the likes of, we've just talked about Ampere Pass, but you've also got, and there are more, but Champ Kylie, Fasal, Vega on the scene. The bookies do seem to think so with Gaelic Warrior that it'll be Ballymore because he's 10 points bigger for the Supreme and the Bartlett. Um, this horse seems to travel very well and makes the running. Um, I'm not a, I'm not 100% sure if I'd be going for the Ballymore with him. Um, I don't know what Willie will do. But um, I, I, he's one horse I can't figure out. It's hard to get a, gra get a grasp on where he'll go. He looks to have all the... All the gears needed to travel around Cheltenham. I wonder, would he just do a small bit too much in the ballet more if he got took on? But he likes the Hermes Allen. He's made his, he's made the running twice this year. Hermes Allen isn't going to give it to him soft. I don't know where Willie's going to go with all these novices, but um, I just wouldn't be lumping on him for the ballet more. First world problems, but 10 points bigger, 16 to 1 for the Supreme, if there's anything in that. Um, you say you don't know what to make of him. Might he be heading to Newbury en route for a race that's had a million different tags and names along the way. It's been the Schweppes, it's been the Tote Gold Trophy, it's now the Betfair Hurdle. Clonmel being delayed by a week was intriguing because, of course, uh, the weights published for Newbury, so he can run off 149 with a £5 penalty when I've heard in dispatches from various commentators this Gaelic warrior even mentioned as a possible, he's not in the entries, but he was even mentioned at one point as a possible for the champion hurdle, for heaven's sake. If he's that good, he could be absolutely launched into orbit here off 149 plus five. Is he the proverbial good thing to go to Newbury and win the Betfair hurdle? Or is that just a distraction? How far away is Newbury? Willie normally doesn't back up his horses that quick. He gives them a chance to recover. Clonmel was heavy the other day. It looked tough going. He was probably the only horse that finished his race off well. Um, Willie does the right thing by horses, so I just wouldn't think, I wouldn't be backing him until I see the declarations anyway. Fair answer, very measured. Uh, Katira, Perseus Way, Pick Dohi, Ampere Pass, Impervious, and Gaelic Warrior. David Mullins, your performance of the week on this edition of Festival Focus. Impervious. Impervious, who might very well be the one for the Mez chase in eight weeks' time. That's how far away it is. David, thank you. Folks at home, thank you very much, as always, for giving us your time to watch Festival Focus. You know the drill by now. We'll be back in the same spot next week. Good luck.